you often. Thanks for hustling to get me out of there. Without making me feel hustled. So thanks. Thanks. <sighs> thanks for doing the right thing by not just selling me tires. Welcome. Les Schwab Tires. Doing the right thing matters. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks! Thanks for not just selling me tires. Thanks for running out to my car to greet me. Like, running, running. Thanks for checking my brakes for free! For fixing my flap For free! And being just hassle-free. For talking to me like an intelligent human being. You don't see that too often. Thanks for hustling to get me out of there. Without making me feel hustled. So thanks. Thanks. <sighs> thanks for doing the right thing by not just selling me tires. Welcome. Les Schwab Tires. Doing the right thing matters. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks! Thanks for not just selling me tires. Thanks for running out to my car to greet me. Like, running, running. Thanks for checking my brakes for free. For fixing my flap for free. And being just hassle-free. For talking to me like an intelligent. Welcome back to the Renegade Report, and guess what? I have one of the men who helped me get paid around here. Assistant Athletic Director, Mr. Keith Ford. How you doing, sir? Good, Kenny. How you doing today? Doing great, man. It's, it's an honor to have some sit-down time with you because most of our time is spent signing paperwork and, hey, Kenny, all right, I need you to sign this. I need you to sign this. Can you do this? Great to hang out yeah, with you yeah. lunch time, right? I know, exactly. Yeah. Well, I thought if I come over before lunch, I might get a free lunch from you on the way out. Oh, but, yeah, but. I got you, man. I owe you I owe you a <laughs> few free lunches, man. You guys have looked out for me majorly. So, so Keith, uh, I definitely can't go on without saying this. I appreciate you welcoming me in. You know, you opened the doors to your office when I need space to work. You know, and those things, those things are priceless in my book. You know, I walk around. You know, I grew up wanting to be a renegade. I watched them on TV. I never had it thought of me actually being here working as a professional so i appreciate you opening the doors for me sir. oh no and we appreciate all you do for us kenny i mean you're a great advocate for bc athletics and and the college in general so dream, it's, dream, it's dream great to have true. you and work with you man dream come true man i won't let you down so so let's talk about uh, some of the amazing things coming up to end the year it's been a great spring you know our baseball and softball teams though i just gotta say i, I don't i shouldn't have favorites during the year but how can you not be proud of the output from baseball and softball? Oh, it's been amazing, right? Uh, Coach Payton and baseball, they played a very, very tough non-conference schedule. Yes. And, you know, the kids just, they're just fighters, and they come to play, and they play hard every day. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of teams would have shut it down after their non-conference, right? Yes. They, I mean, I don't know what their record was, but they were well below 500. Yes, they were. And, uh, you know, to turn it around and – get into conference and play the way they've played in conference and you know even late in conference they had two game lead which then they gave a couple games away tech you know essentially and uh just to, to hang with it and you know win those last two and, and, and win the conference and get Woo! to the regionals I got and, and be bumps. able and be able to host this weekend man just what? just amazing <laughs> you know it's a testament to it's a testament to the kids and the coaching staff from baseball yes and, you know i'm not a baseball guy traditionally i didn't get to play a bunch of organized baseball so when you guys ask me to help out and go announce some games i walk in all nervous i feel like a, a high school freshman walking yeah. in with my folder and i go to coach p i'm like hey coach p how you doing i'm kenny calvin <laughs> he's like kenny i know who you are you know he walks me in like hey these dudes know me you know so yeah. so coach p thanks for always opening the doors and welcoming me in but having the opportunity to watch baseball last year and see some of the struggles that we had closing games mm -hmm. it's all more that special this year to see us finishing the games that we should have won last year yeah. right oh you know, for sure for sure for sure for sure because yeah. we definitely had some battles last season where we're playing well and we just didn't finish right. And yeah. I'm like, man, this is tough to watch, you know, let yeah, alone no, call for sure. it. For so, sure. so I'm extremely proud of Coach P and the rest of the guys. You know, some of my son's best friends or my friend's sons play on the team, and I get the chance to watch them grow and develop, uh, Kyle Woolman and some of the other guys. But that experience with baseball has been fantastic. Now let's switch sides of the field and go to softball talk about my first guest of my renegade report career coach Casey Goodman I I mean what can you say <laughs> right she comes in here first year they go I believe it was 31 and 9 they haven't had a conference title since 2012 <laughs> when Sandy Taylor was the coach <laughs> absolutely uh, and then you get you know you get Kylie Fahey here who just 
tore it up Pitcher in the circle. Pitcher of the year. Right? It just, I mean, leading, leading the state in strikeouts, second in wins, fourth in ERA. I mean, just oh man, just and, amazing. And, so, And one of the things Coach Martinez talked about was character off the field. And yeah. one of the exciting things about having Kylie on the segment was that she opened up and was transparent about her upbringing, mm-hmm. not having a great – family history which yeah. touched me in the soul because yeah, exactly. I share that and how we used athletics in Bakersfield College athletics to turn us into great people on and off the field and one day I had my son remember the day I had my son yeah. re- do an assessment test as I left I saw Kylie Fahey leave yeah. and had the opportunity to ask her hey Kylie can you talk to my son about the impact of staying here because he has a scholarship to go somewhere else he's tinkering back and forth on staying here and Kylie did an amazing job of just telling her story and what she ended up accomplishing yeah. when she wasn't even looked at to be this potential player yeah yeah you know so so hats off to Kylie Fahey let's talk about some of the other players uh, Erica Chavez uh you know so many and I'll touch those on the recaps but but soft women's softball hats off to you and what do we have coming up for both teams so tomorrow night uh uh, both teams are hosting regionals. Uh, ironically, both are playing in Riverside. Ooh. Right? Uh, baseball start at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Softball at 7 p.m. under the lights. Oh, um, get here early. Uh, we're expecting big crowds. Uh, you know, these are our best of three series. So Saturday we'll play uh, baseball play at one, softball at two. Okay. And if there's uh, if no one is swept at that point, we'll play another game right after. Wow. Those early games to. To decide it, well, you a heard, rubber match. You heard it here first, guys. We got baseball and softball regionals here. It's going to be an amazing weekend. I'm excited. I actually just got a little nervous right now because this is huge. You know, and, and Coach used to always tell me, if you're not nervous, you're not ready. So I'm ready for some championship baseball and softball. For sure. Keith, for I'm sure. glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if you don't mind, Thanks let's get into some uh, recaps yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll talk about uh, men's track and field. Grants as well, and SoCal Regionals coming up May 5th and May 12th at San Diego Mesa, and then the top finishers qualify for the state meet on May 18th and May 19th. And just to add to that, Kenny, uh, Jacob Whitby actually won the uh, the champ the conference championship in discus two uh, two weeks ago. Mr. Whitby, I was supposed to have my man Jeremy Stott on the show today, and Jeremy Stott would be proud because if I'm not mistaken. My teammate has both of those records, and he loves to see you guys perform at a high level. Half to Mr. Whitby. Amazing job. You know, big. I wanted to be a track guy at BC, but unfortunately for me, I was a little bit more in tune to music. So when the spring came, I was running to Hollywood, and we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but, hey, let's move forward to baseball. We talked about baseball, so let's talk about some postseason awards. Uh, the baseball team had ten players named to the Western State All-Conference team, including seven to the first team with Nathan Ortiz being named Pitcher of the Year. So we had the Pitcher of the Year in baseball, and we had the Pitcher of the Year in softball. And I don't know if you follow baseball, but there's only nine positions when you start the game, and seven of our nine were first team all-conference. How special is that? So let's get into the first team. We got Kyle Wilman, Zach Williams, Hector Ruvalcaba. I'm going to say it like Lynch said it because I've been screwing his name up all year. <laughs> <laughs> Bryson Hernandez, Joe Pineda, Lane Cowan, Nathan Ortiz, pitcher of the year. I didn't know that till today. I'm blown away. Ryan Darby, second team, Luke Lewis, and Shanti, not my wife, Ross, was also second team. So hats off to baseball, pro season awards. And let's talk about their last game that earned that where they won 12-2 against West L.A. Oh, I love it. I earned my scholarship against West L.A. I had five turnovers individually against them, so we always do special getting them. So, Bakersfield College Baseball defeated West L.A. 12-2 to earn the conference title. 
Nathan Ortiz with six and four through seven strong innings to get the win. Ortiz gave up two runs on six hits while striking out nine. The Renegades' offense exploded for 12 runs on 19 hits. Luke Lewis led the team with four hits, going four or five and two RBI. Zach Williams had three hits. Bryson Hernandez was three or five. Tim Billingsley had two hits, three RBI, and Connor Dodge went one of two. Renegades finished the regular season with a 21 and nine record, 15 and five. And just like Keith said, in the middle of the season, we were hunkering on 500 and just caught fire. So amazing job, Renegade baseball. All right, and we talked about track earlier. We'll move forward to talk about the six Renegades qualifying for the SoCal Regionals. BC Women's Track and Field, of course, had Sydney Roman, 10,000 meter and 1,500 meter. Jasmine Green, long jump, one of my favorite events in the 100 meter. Uh, Tori Wiley, heptathlon in the 800 meter and javelin throw. Naomi Esparza, 400 meter hurdles, which I was a 300 meter hurdle guy. Congratulations, uh, Naomi. Gabriel Lugo, 400-meter dash. Jocelyn Curry with the 400-meter dash. All qualified in our relay of Curry, Esparza, Lugo, and Green. Qualified for the 4x1 and the 4x4. So now let's touch back on softball. We already talked about that, but let's get into the postseason awards. We had eight players named to the all-conference team. Casey Goodman and Megan Rowe were named the coaching staff of the year. My first guest made Coach of the Year. I'm going to take that one to my grave. We might have to have more coaches on before their season starts. Yes. <laughs> you might have some magic touch there, Ken. All right, we're looking forward to the year. I told y'all I'm good luck. They did an article on it. <laughs> so let's talk about the Western State North first team, Miss Erica Chavez, our leading batter, Miss Alexis Solis, Jordan Jimenez. I was saying Jimenez all year, and then I sat at the game behind her grandpa and you know, her dad, and he was like, it's Jimenez. So Jordan Jimenez, Ashley Hernandez, Kylie Fahey, pitcher of the year. Also, I'm hiring her as a mentor. If she don't get a job, she's going to get a job with me where I work because she mentored my son about trying to stay home so she can save me some money. <laughs> so second team, McKenna Valencia. Sadie Benuelos, Monica Alvarez, Yesenia Saldana, All Southern California, Erica Chavez, All State Team, Kylie Fahey, and we have the Western States Conference North Coaching Staff for the Year, like we said, and the Southern Cal Coach of the Year for Coach Casey Goodman. Hats off to baseball. All right, moving forward to beach volleyball, and I had Coach Carl Ferreira on, who was an amazing, uh, amazing uh, guest. You know, he's one of the people that I've met, you know, moving through the through the campus year in and year out. But just having him on and having the opportunity to talk to him opened me up, you know, and just reminded yeah. me of why I do what I do as well because he was an inspiration. So just talking about uh, beach volleyball, uh, championships turned into a showcase for Bakersfield College. It was an all-BC final where Alexis Paris and Sarah Amendrez, uh, BC's number two team, defeated Fence Slow and McCowan of Ventura and Brooke Horak and Jordan Morrow took care of Yoon and Boswick of Santa Monica. In the championship match, Horak and Morrow took the first game 21-19. And in game two, Paris and Armendarez bounced back to win 21-15. In the third and deciding game, Horak and Morrow found themselves in a hole but fought back to take the game and championships winning 15-13. Both pairs advanced to the SoCal Regional Pairs Championship. Brooke Horak and Morrow will be the three seed, and Alexis Paris and Amendarez will be the eight seed. So great job, ladies. Uh, we're going to move forward. And that's, that's, and that was that, it. that's tomorrow, Kenny. Yes, and they, that they is play tomorrow. tomorrow. They play tomorrow. Uh, we say, they say the beach volleyball team will compete in the SoCal Regional Team Championships, and that's going to be an amazing day. And the Paris Championships is tomorrow. So that is our recaps, Keith. Oh, don't it feel great out here right now? It's beautiful, Kenny. I, I know what I told Diana. If I got here early enough, I was going to go holler at my man Pete Maglieri and suit up full gear. Full gear. <laughs> I was going to do the show in full gear today, guys, if they would have let me. But I get here early enough. But, hey, next year we're going to do that, Keith. Sign me out some gear. I still got my helmet and my jersey. Well, I think we pass. need to, depending on what venue we're in, you need to dress for that venue. That, it, Diana, you heard it here first. Whatever venue I'm in. So so we're going to stay away from the swim venue because I'm, <laughs> sh I'm not sure I want to see you in the I told you I'm ready for my suit. red Speedo. I, I think I can still – get close to my record in that 50 breaststroke and i still in the man in the pool but hey this has been the renegade report 
with the last of the Bowser Boys, the first of the Grider Gang, and the former general in Coach Chudy's Army. Keith, I want to thank you for everything, man. Oh. I know Coach, Coach Taylor, she, she puts us in position. You, you set up the chess board and you move the pieces. Whatever piece you need me to be, whether it's the pawn, the rook, or the knight, I'm ready to take some pieces. Well, it's great to have you, Kenny. All right, it's been fun. It's been fun couple months so far. So well, yeah, I'm definitely having yeah. a blast. I didn't even know I knew how to do this, but they threw me into the hot seat, and now I'm ice cold, baby. It's been Kenny Calvin of the Renegade Report. We'll see you next week. Welcome back to the...